than yours? It is cut off on yours, but what I'm noticing, <laughs> Heidi, is when we post it, like yeah. when it posts, the squares go back to to normal. Like, yeah, it, it's okay. Wild. Hi, Marcus. <laughs> my, my cousin who really. Oh, hi, like Marcus. My nephew. Hey, cousin, nephew. Oh, that's better. Hi, how are you? Good. Robin, I'm so excited to talk to you today. Me too. Me too. I can't too. wait. I just can't wait. I can't wait to get into the real stuff, but I have something like like not even related to relationships that I have to tell you about. Yeah, please. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm here for it. I've got my coffee. It's Friday, but the Friday before Christmas, Friday. Oh, God. Love it. I'm here for it. Well, as you know, I mean, you are a part of my team. You are part of my, mm -hmm. my brand makeover. You are doing the glow up. You are like leading the charge on the Heidi B coaching glow up. And I've been getting so many compliments about it. It's been amazing. But one of the things that happened, this is the first time this has ever happened to me. Okay. Oh. Kind of a long story, but bear with me. So yeah, it, when, when COVID hit, I got nervous about my immune system. And so I started drinking mm -hmm. um, emergency from Costco, right? Because you can order like tons of it. They're those little packets and you just put them in your water and they're like, full of vitamin C or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Then I discovered that they're made with prison labor. So I was like, Oh my God, I can't be drinking right. those anymore. I need to find a different alternative. Yes. So I found this company called liquid IV and they make these little sticks and they donate one, you know, they're kind of like Tom's for every, stick, yeah. you know, for every pouch that you buy, they donate a pouch and um, all of their uh, materials are recyclable, like very sustainable, oh. like sustainability oriented. So anyway, I emailed and they taste delicious. So I emailed them this week to say, Oh my God, I got your things. Here's why, because I hate drinking water, even though I'm like yeah. privileged enough to have clean water right out of the tap. Right. And they were like, oh my God, this is such a great story. We don't have a promo code for you, but we're gonna send you a bunch of free stuff. So I'm like, oh my God, I can't oh. believe it. So anyway, when, when that stuff comes, I'm gonna do a story on it or whatever. But I feel like that's partly because my brand has its act together and because I reached out to them and just told them my story about like, that their product yeah. is delicious. So Liquid IV is the name of the company, people, but you'll see it on my thing. But I didn't want to hijack our thing about that, but I feel like it's related to my glow up. Oh, totally. Totally. That's amazing. I think yeah. you should always share, always share the wins, whether it, it was a big or win. not. Wins are awesome. And I love knowing that information, Heidi. You know me. I, I mm -hmm. like, it feels good to do good, to, you know, dress well, yes, but if you can feel good and give back and know the company is is on the same track as you mm -hmm. and aligned with your vibe then that's awesome so yes. kudos i know i'm really excited and they're like little their product tastes delicious they have a strawberry one that i'm drinking right now and okay. tangerine one and like a berry acai i think that's how you yeah. say that I know. anyway Every time. so yeah. i'm just like i was like that started my week off and i'm like floating for <laughs> That's got awesome. me through that. So, so it, you feel like it's working just the same as, as the Vita C or? Actually, I think it's better because they okay. have this thing that they call their technology is called cellular transport technology. And it's like one, it like multiplies your water. So it's like drinking oh. one water equals drinking three, which is like, yes, please. I hate drinking water so much. <laughs> Yeah, that is the liquid IV. I get I get bored with water. It's like, yeah. Now I gotta hydrate, but exactly. I really want something else. Yeah. So, anyway. Okay. Well, good. I I love that. So that's what's going on with me. What's going on with you this week? Oh my god! I'm like, what day is it? It's Friday. We just talked about. It. I feel like the the week flew by. My <laughs> win today is I got up early enough that our post office here opens at eight thirty. Mm -hmm. The other day when I drove by the post office, it was a line around the block. <gasps> literally yes. yeah in a little town never like I've never seen it and mm -hmm. so today I was like I have to get packages out to my husband's family yeah for, to get there by Christmas and mm -hmm. so I went down there I was like I'm gonna be there at open and of course it wasn't at open it was a half an hour in and I was like oh my god oh my god <laughs> so I'm getting down there and there's nobody there's <gasps> yay like, a there's miracle people, yeah there's two people in line in front of me but they have normal mail you know yeah. and I, I waltzed in and the and the mail lady she's like oh I haven't seen you in a while and she's like oh I guess you're getting prepared oh I guess all your packages and I was like yes and no one's here and she goes girl you timed it right because it's she looks at her watch she's like it's about to go down and so I was like maybe I should go play the lottery because that was pretty yes awesome. oh my god yeah. that's so funny I feel like I saw so many memes today I mean I was just scrolling before we got on and I saw so yeah. many things today that were like Stop tracking the package. It's in God's hands now because it's like <laughs> parents and people are compulsively tracking. Like, where is it? Is it going to get there? <laughs> I love that. It's in God's hands now. Just go. Yes. Just like, trust the universe. Yeah. Be lucky that you get a package at all. I mean, 2020, it's like, I, there's no expectations whatsoever. No, none. So, 
Uh, it you might have be been a New Year's present. <laughs> you have. Oh my god, I love. I love that. You have been kind of prolific on IG this week, though. You've been on here every day. I have. It's good been a work. Busy week, but I, you know, it keeps me up. It keeps me motivated. Yeah. I love talking to all my ladies, and I'm not stopping. So on Monday, mm -hmm. I'm going to be on Facebook Live, and I yes. really want you to come over there because okay. my designer friend Jen Charco of Stone Crow mm -hmm. Designs and I are going to be talking about our favorite best and worst costumes of TVs and movies for Ooh. 2020. So do you, what time is that? It's going to be at 4 p.m. on Monday. Uh, and I'm going to oh, send you an invite. That's OK. You can always watch, watch later. Replay. I'll watch the and replay. I want comments even later. I want you to comment. I will. I'll do it. I, we have so many feelings about wardrobe this year. So yeah, <laughs> that's what we're doing on Monday. Oh my god, that's going to be awesome. Saying, yeah, I have another beauty kiki with my friend Abiba on Wednesday. Mm. And then oh we're my gonna god, we're gonna do Thursday holiday season. It's gonna be awesome. I love it. So good, so good. I love it. So well, let's today, talk about patterns, girl. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so here is the thing. You know, this is really kind of the bread and butter of the work that I that I did to change my um, perspective on men and relationships, and it's like really the crux of the work that I do with my clients to help them like discover the fact that. Uh, love and relationships are accessible to everyone, that they're not just for a certain subset of people who look a certain way, they're for all of us. And um, one of the reasons that it's important to like look at patterns is because so often we have um, stuff that happens to a, you know, there's, there's like a number of, there's a cacophony of choices here, yeah. but it's like, it's like, I like to think of myself as like a pie chart actually. And it's like, part of my stuff is related to trauma. Part of my stuff is related to the story I'm telling myself. Part of my stuff is related. There's a slice of it that's related to cultural, like the cultural narrative. There's a slice of it that is just my experience, right? So, you know, when I think about, it would be so easy if all of the stuff that we did to sabotage ourselves in love and relationships was, was traceable to one incident. Right. <laughs> it's usually not. No. No, exactly. But the good news is, is that when we look in, and so we'll get into the pattern identification, the process in a minute, but I like to kind of refer to it as an inventory. And so basically mm -hmm. what I do is I suggest that my clients, if they're really all in, you know, if they're paying me and we're working one-on-one, -on -one, then I'm like, look, we're doing this whole, yeah. we're doing an entire inventory of all of your past relationships, even back to your first crushes, just to see Ooh. what this stuff looks like. If we're not working together and somebody's like, oh, I'm kind of curious about this, I'm not sure, then I'm like, look, do this for your past five big relationships and see what comes up. But it's like, yeah. the more digging you do around this stuff, the, the clearer the patterns are gonna be. But we gotta look, we have to know what these patterns are so we can see the ways that they manifest in our lives and we see the way that they kind of distort. Because it's like, nobody goes into a relationship with the intention of like throwing a grenade on it and exploding it yeah. with like arguments and fighting and you know, throwing stuff or whatever right yeah. we all enter our relationships like the best intentions we hope usually. so <laughs> i mean i would say i guess maybe that's like 90 percent of us enter relationships with the best intentions oh i like yeah. this person i think this is going to be long term like we don't plan on cheating on them we don't plan on no, lying to them, yeah, whatever yeah, you know yeah. stuff like that stuff like that is the consequence of like these old patterns these old ideas these old traumas that just kind of manifest in our lives if we aren't yeah. aware of them mm -hmm. or like actively working in the opposite direction of them yes yeah so it's important stuff and the other thing that's really cool about this tool that i'm going to talk about that we're going to talk our way through is that you can use it for your romantic relationships, of course, but also if you have strained family relationships, if there's somebody in your family that just every time you see Aunt Linda, you guys are like buddy right. heads, then it's like, okay, it might be time to inventory your relationship with Aunt Linda. And when you look at all of the interactions that you can remember with you and Aunt Linda, you may realize that when you were six, Aunt Linda said like, are you sure you're having that second cookie? And you were like, Fuck you, Aunt Linda, you know? Like, yeah, maybe that's the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Oh, so. I believe that. <laughs> so. God damn it, Aunt Linda. That's right. So the beautiful thing about it is the versatility of this of this tool, because yeah. you, you can use it in a lot of places. Cool. I'm yeah. ready, because I've okay. had a lot of, like. <laughs> Things were like, coming up. Yeah, I was like, my first crush was Jared Leto, the actor. It's funny. <laughs> So cute. I didn't have oh my standards God. or anything. <laughs> I, like, I know, but I mean, my first, he was up there on mine because, well, like we came of age during um, my my so called life. Forever. Have you rewatched it? I haven't. <laughs> have I ever watched it? No, rewatched it. Have you rewatched oh, it? Yeah, I, um, 
I own the DVD set. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Because it was I, only, it's so funny because wasn't there only like two seasons? Or, wasn't it really yeah, short list? No, it was like a season. It was, yeah. like a, it was like a long season, you know, like maybe a season and a half. But mm -hmm. that same creator created Veronica Mars, by the way. Uh, the same people did Veronica right. Mars and then like later did some other show I love. I can't think of it. But yes, I let's just yes. say I thought I was Claire Dane. Yes, of course. So romantic. Yeah. Just so indifferent. Like, whatever. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Um, so, totally. so there are a couple of ways that you can get your hands on the I have a series of worksheets to take you through this inventory. Okay. Um, you can you can also just create this little matrix on your own. You don't need to have the worksheets. But if you're oh. feeling like, oh, I just want to fill in the blanks, then you can grab yeah. the worksheets. The worksheets are in two places. They're at the back of my book. If you get the book, oh. Relationship Ready and Paperback. That's they come awesome. in the back of that. Um, but they're also on my website. So if you go to my website, subscribe to my mailing list, I will automatically send you the um, the worksheets, That's which are really cool. They're amazing. electronic PDFs, so you can just fill them in on your laptop. Oh, you don't cool. even have to like print them off or anything. Um, cool. And then the third option is they are hosted on my website, and you can just click them there. You don't have to, yeah, you don't have to subscribe, but you should. But just subscribe. <laughs> If, but you're just liking the, if you're like liking what all this content, then you might as well just subscribe because then you'll get content from Heidi on the rest. Yes, yes, totally. So, so basically, if you so regardless of whether or not you download the worksheets or you get their, your hands on them or you just like have a piece of you know or you have an old notebook or if you yeah. want to do this like some of my type Ers really like to do this in an Excel spreadsheet. So whatever, that however you. Want. Yeah, <laughs> whatever floats your boat, you know. Whatever floats your boat, truly. I like to so, color and draw it out. And, and the other pictures, thing that's, I think, different. important to know about this is, like, there's no perfect way to do it, right? Because right. some of, you know, one of the things I really have noticed over the last year in the clients that I work with, you know, a lot of clients I work with are, like, type A perfectionist personalities, and they want to do all the work, and they want to do it all right, and they just want to stay in doing this work. And it's like, yeah. no, this this work gets you ready to go practice it. So it's like... Once you have this awareness that you're going to learn here, then you have to go implement it. You have to go embody it. You have to go practice it a couple of times, you know, practice yeah. doing the opposite, right? So basically what you're going to do is if you do this on a notebook, I'd suggest turning it horizontally so you have okay. a lot more width to work with. Yeah, yeah. But basically you're going to make one column that's the name of the person. That's okay. easy, right? Yeah. So that's whoever it is. Then the next column is going to be how old you were when you had your interaction with them, your crush on them, whatever it was, just like mm -hmm. so you get an idea. It doesn't have to be in chronological order, but you will find that your patterns change through your 20s. You might have a pattern that you engage in and by your 30s, it may have morphed into something else or whatever, yeah. right? So yeah. it's, it's not a critical piece of this inventory that you have your age, but it can be useful information. Useful. Sure. Um, and then the next column, you're going to want it to be, this is where you're going to give me all the deets. Or give yourself all of these. This is gonna be a summary of the relationship. The so highs. Gonna be a fatty column. Yes. This is where this is where you get to tell the story of the relationship. Use all the words. Be as descriptive as you want. It could take up the whole page. It's fine. Just get it out. Like all the stuff. Like all the stuff. And then he did this, and he was talking to her, and we were doing this, and blah, blah, blah whatever. This is where the story about the relationship goes. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> So, so far, it's actually not that bad, right? Because right now we're just ranting about Chad from yeah. eighth grade. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so then the next column is, I'm going to ask you to assess how this relationship affected you. So did having a boyfriend named Chad in eighth grade make you feel, feel good? Did it give you self-esteem? Right. Did you, um, like, maybe did you get financial gain from it because Chad in college paid for paid for stuff for you or whatever, or, you know, whatever. Did you get, um, uh, were you like, did it kind of assuage a sense of fear that you would be alone? And you're like, okay, I'm not alone. At least I have Chad, right? Gotcha. So these, yeah. the yeah. things that are going in this next column of how it affected you, this stuff I want to be short, short and sweet. So okay. you, you get the column before to write the whole story. Awesome. But in this column, I want it to be kind of those phrases like um, felt, you know, like ego, like, uh, ego made me feel yeah. good. Self-esteem felt nice to have a hot yeah. boyfriend, like just short more, little snippets. Yeah, more bullet points and more like a pros cons list to me. Yes. Yes. Just like the pros of Chad, the cons of Chad. Like, yes, exactly. Like because when you look at how the relationship affected you, that's right. where we're going to start to pick up some of these patterns. And so it's going to be yeah. easier to recognize them if they're just little bullet points than if they're like a full long story. Okay. 
Yeah. That's, that's good. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. That's so, how a chart works. A chart. I know my chart people, you could color code it. Oh my God. I've done this work with women who I'm like, okay, every time you see this pattern, let's highlight it blue. Every time you see this pattern, let's highlight it. Um, where's my, I don't think I have it in here because I was playing with it. No, I don't have it in here. I was going to like put up this little cup of my. <laughs> or do you have those little post-it note flags? flags? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love you. And then I have a friend of mine who does bubble letters like a boss, you know, oh. get, like, and then I do my own lettering version of font and stuff, but it's important. <laughs> it's important. It's important. <laughs> so yeah, so color coding is an option or like, you know, finding some way to start to identify when you were involved with a partner who you got financial gain from or when you were involved with a partner who like really made you feel like your self esteem through or That's okay. Moving on. I have my do not disturb on, but I got a phone call. That's weird. Okay. Anyway. Um, so you just start identifying or do, when do you have a partner that just showers you with attention or when did you find that you started to stray because you got less attention and like somebody else was giving you more attention? Right. When were you doing some attention seeking? Um, right. and so then that goes to the final mm -hmm. column or the second to last column. Sorry. The next column is going to be, what was your part? So what was my part? <laughs> I'm just going to set this over here. So what was my part in the chaos? So maybe my part in the chaos with Aunt Linda is that, you know, when she w when I was six, she like asked me about this extra cookie. And maybe my part is that I've been <laughs> hanging on to that for 35 years. <laughs> Pretty like a six-year-old be like, bitch, I'm going to have another cookie. Because <laughs> I'm six. That's my six-year-old self might not have been as empowered as my 31-year-old self is today, yeah. right? So so um, a lot of times when we look at what our part is, especially when it comes to romantic relationships, yeah. this comes up all the time. Attention seeking, I was looking for attention from somebody else or what, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, dishonesty, I knew this relationship was over, but I decided to stay because I wanted to get through the holidays. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like. Or because I wanted to. I'll break up with him at, at Valentine's. That's yes, right. yeah, yeah. Or like after Valentine's, because like, what if I get a blue a box from that. Tiffany? <laughs> That's right. A lot of people do that. Be like, right. like, I'll just roll through the, yeah. the love holiday. Yeah. Of course, right? I mean, like, look, we're all humans. And that's the thing about this little, this inventory. There's no shame. I can guarantee you that I know someone, either myself or I know someone who has done this stuff that is cringeworthy. And like, that is yeah, part yeah. of, that really is part of like the coming of age experience. We do <laughs> cringeworthy shit. Like I wrote online, oh my God, this, it makes me, it makes me cringe to even say it out loud. I had this boyfriend in high school that I thought was like, okay, but yeah. really, he was like friends with all these other guys that were really, that I thought were really hot. <laughs> my plan was to kind of like trade up once I okay. got into this. I was person, like, right? let me guess. Yeah. <laughs> right. So as a 40 year old, that's embarrassing to admit, but I know for damn sure I'm not the only 15 year old that had this plan no. in mind. Right. So no. Yeah. <laughs> but that was part of a larger pattern that I discovered when I started to look at myself of like, my part was like, I wasn't even attracted to this guy. And yet I committed to him and like, you know, spent my want. time. Yeah, yeah. Did, did whatever. Right. So there were, there were times when I wrote this and look, this is a painful process. I will tell you that when I did a thorough inventory of all my relationships and yeah. like um, emotional, I guess it's not even so much crushes, but I asked women to also inventory, like maybe their emotional affairs that they have. And for me, that Ooh. covered men in my 20s that, like, I had deep emotional affairs with, but they were uh, gay and closeted, right? Yeah. And, like, so they were supremely unavailable because they're not, yeah. a you know, like, there was some stuff there that was like, oh, those things also count. So even though it never turned physical with these, there are two men in particular I can think of, even though it never turned physical, I had these, like, kind of emotional vendors with them because, I mean, we were confused, we we're 20 sure. or whatever, right? Sure. But, um it's painful to do this. And it took me months to do because I was like, I would do a line or two and then be like, yeah. okay, that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And that's the other thing I remember I did this in uh, what year was it that I did it? like 20, 20, 2012, 2010, 2012. Uh, no, not 2010, yeah. 2012, 2013. And I remember those big chunky infinity scars were like all the rage. Yeah. And I had a huge chunky infinity scarf that I wore while I did this inventory and I just screamed into it every time. <laughs> My part was, good, yeah. know, every time I had to write down on my part that I was like childish or acting yeah. entitled or 
um, you know, that I, this was my pride that was driving me to stay in this relationship with this guy that I didn't really like, but he was like hot. So I felt like, oh, I want people yeah. to see me in a certain way. I want people to see me dating this hot guy. Like that's pride, yeah. you know? So um, every time I had to write down some like real truths about the behavior that I had engaged in when it came to my relationships with men, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like <laughs> so well, that's, I mean, that's really good. Okay. So, so run through that chart just super quick again of the categories. It was yeah. the word. name of the person, right. the age yep. that you were when you engaged with them, then age. the high, I call it like the summary, the highlights, the low lights, you can just spill the tea, yeah. the whole, the chaos, whatever the it was. Column. Yeah. Then there is the how did the relationship affect you column. The so, kind of pros and cons. Bullet yeah, points. made okay. you feel good, lots of attention, yeah. um, felt worthy, felt like you fit in, totally. you know, that kind of stuff. And then the final column is um, what was your part in the case? What was your part? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, I, like, I did get them all. I felt like I missed a, a <laughs> column, but I got them all. Okay. You bought them. And then at the very end, if you were like feeling like you wanted to, you could make like, a, is this a part of a larger pattern and make like a little checkbox? For yourself, just yes. to see or which one. Or just ones. like highlight those moments. Yes. You know, to see what comes up as you're going through that chart with each relationship. Yeah. You can highlight, hey, that word came up in the last one, and that yeah. word came up in the last one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I see and the so pattern. One of the things that's interesting is there's some patterns that you already know, right? There's some right. stuff that you're like, I know that. Yeah. I already know that. For me, it was unavailability. I already knew that I was into unavailable guys. The first guys right. that I messaged with were like in AOL chat rooms. My very first dates were with people from behind computer screens. Wow. You know, yeah. my, yeah. all my flirtation happened across screens in the 90s um, because I had some abandonment wounds and I just remember yeah. feeling like I can be whoever I want to be and actually even better, I can be whoever they want me to be. And so I was supremely, like all of my early flirtations, 13 to 18, yeah. were with people beyond screens because I had made this kind of, I had decided I had made this mistake and I had said yes to going out with a guy in my class and I didn't really know who he was. And then some other sixth grader came over to me one day and was like, are you going out with so-and-so? And I was <laughs> like, um, yeah. And she was like, ew, you know, and I was like, <laughs> I had, you know, yeah, <laughs> right. So I had made this mistake in my mind. And so from then on, I was like, I'm not dating boys in my school. I will only be interested, you know, I'll only be doing this over sure. here where it's supremely safe, you know? Sure. So I already knew that I had this like unavailability stuff going on for me, you know, and it was, it became clear through the work that I did on this inventory, the types of unavailability that were particularly mm -hmm. attractive mm -hmm. to me. So it was obvious that I was attracted to men who didn't live near me. It was obvious that I was going to chase men who, oh, hi, Shani. Oh, I'm so excited hi. you're on here. Uh, it was obvious that I was going to go back and, or that I was attracted to men who had problems with uh, drugs and alcohol. And it was clear to me that I was attracted to men that were involved with other people. Those are the three. Yeah. When I looked at my inventory, I'm like, damn, there's a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> there is a lot of that, right? But there was other stuff that I wasn't aware of. One of the things was that I had a history, a pattern of dating guys I wasn't even attracted to. Uh, because it right. kept the stakes really low, you know, right. and I had a pattern of being, you know, having emotional relationships with men who were unavailable because they were gay, you know, yeah. so it's like, that's not their, that's my problem that I get invested in somebody in this way where it's like, I can't, you know, that where that's supreme unavailability. Anyway, yeah. there were these, there were some things I already had an inkling of, but doing all this writing around it really gave me a lot more clarity of like, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> well, and, and a lot of what you're saying, too, is, yeah, you're you're keeping, like you said, the, the standard low. And if you mm -hmm. keep it low, then you can blame it. Yeah. You can excuse it. You can excuse your behavior. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, I mean, this is the relationship. Yeah. Like, and it never know. really it never really True. matters because you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I only felt like mad about that person anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. and I feel like, Heidi, too, don't you think that I, I mean, I wasn't. I, I was a very like innocent teen, you know, like mm -hmm. I didn't date, I, you know, I was very, but I also feel like that's a safety thing too, that mm -hmm. I was like, I'm not going to put myself, you know, like, I, yes. I'm not going to do that. I was raised by a single mom, no siblings. So it's mm -hmm. like, I saw my mom do it right without yeah. anybody. Yeah. So then I kind of grew up going, well, why do I need somebody? Yeah. And there's, there's that kind of pattern too, I think reflected from your parents or yes. from people, other relationships that affect your mindset yes. that make you choose these decisions, right? Yeah, Doesn't like think? just supremely, supremely guarding your heart and not even allowing yes. yourself to practice. 
Yes. Right? Like I yes. just, that, that just made my heart hurt for your little 14 year old and 15 year old <laughs> self because you were so guard guarding yourself yeah. and your heart so much that we don't even get to, we don't allow ourselves to practice. And I did the same thing. I mean, mine came from a little bit of a different wound, a different yeah. space, but it's like, I didn't even allow myself to practice saying hi to boys in my grade because I had yeah. this extreme shame and embarrassment about having done it wrong once, you know, or, yeah. and some other pieces, I think too, you yeah. know, I don't, I won't blame it. I don't think it's all related to that one incident from that one thing, although that sticks in my mind, but it's like, sure. I, when I, that was the other thing is when I did this um, re relationship inventory, I really gained a lot of compassion for my younger self of like, wow. How, I like that line. Yeah. Like how, much she was struggling with all of the pain that she was feeling that she felt like she couldn't even feel safe enough to practice yes. saying like, Hey, hi, you're cute. You know, like there yes. was no way that my 13 year old self was tell or 14 year old self, whatever, you know, like my teenager self was confident enough to say any of those things and right. made me feel sad for her, made me feel some compassion for her. So I gave her a big hug because um, she was doing the best she could, you know, but it was like, I we, like we remove ourselves from practicing this stuff around love and relationships. And then when we get to be older and we don't know how to do love and relationships and we've never had any practice with it, right. some of us no, do something honest. crazy like I did. I mean, I married a guy that I had met after, like, after six months and he lived abroad for three of those six months. So it's like, wow. you know, no wonder I didn't know how to practice. I hadn't had any practice in love and relationships. And then I found myself making like a pretty extreme decision around it, you know? Yeah. So, um, so anyway, so the point is this is, this can be really painful. And I do suggest that you, when you're done writing this inventory, that you find somebody that you trust that you can read it to. Here's why. Oh. Here's why. Because a lot of times, uh, especially uh, among, a lot of times, I, you know, I work with women. Sometimes we yes. over own our part. So sometimes like we don't actually have a part in something or, you know, and I, oh, I should have mentioned this. There will be instances where you've had experiences that you do not have a part in. This includes if you have been um, assaulted, if you were neglected, like, right. I, I don't want you searching for like a part in that. That is nothing that that's you don't not, have a yeah. part in that. You not yours, part. Right. Yeah. That's not yours to own. Right. That's so, right. um, so that is partly why I think it's important to read this to somebody so that you can get another person's perspective who you love and trust, not somebody yeah. who's going to use this as a weapon against you. Yeah, just um, to or you can call me. I listen to these all the time. So, you know, and I kind of, oh, yeah. <laughs> It would be ultimate to have you. That, that's the idea. I have like Snapchat brain when it comes to this stuff. I can listen to it. We can talk about it. And I'll just, for, you know, it just gets deleted yeah, from yeah. my brain. So, um, but having somebody to bounce this off of just to say, Hey, does this sound right? Like, is there anything else you think I missed? Or is it, yeah. you know, have I like become over responsible in this, my part category? It's just a really good process to go. Oh, okay. Plus now somebody else knows what your patterns are and what you're trying to adjust. Right. Because that's the next thing. Now that we know that like, oh, I stay in relationships too long. I'm dishonest in relationships. I stay in them too long. Like, even when I know I need to leave, then I stay an extra three months. It's like, okay, now somebody else besides you knows that. And the next time that you come to somebody with like, oh, I'm thinking about, you know, they're like, well, yeah. this is a pattern. Can you try something different? And like honor yeah. your feeling now instead of mushing it down and trying to pretend for another three months. No, that's good. It's like an account accountability partner. Yeah. You know, this stuff yeah. holds you to what's what's happened to you and like where you're, where you're trying to go. Yeah. You need yeah. somebody. I mean, I try, I think I'm a, I'm that person for a lot of my friends, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm so blunt or honest and in, in the best way possible. Yeah. But, but yeah, you, I mean, yeah, you need a person like that. I like that because I'm, like I said, I'm usually the person mm -hmm. that people want me to hold them accountable, mm -hmm. but who, who do I go who's to? Holding, yeah, who's holding space right? for Robin? Right. Right. So um, that, that's interesting for very strong personalities, I think, yes. um, to think about that. Because well, that's it's like, another... who would I go to to trust? And Yes. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no. I got, no. I got so wonderful. jazzed. I was thinking. Because yeah. I was th as I was thinking about even the experience you shared with me about not dating growing up, right? There is also something to being the person who holds space for everyone else, but doesn't ask other people to hold space for them. Right. And that's also another way where we like set the boundaries up. So like we never are vulnerable to anyone. We're super nice. Everyone loves us. <laughs> People come to us all the time to ask us to hold yeah. space for them. But oh, it yeah. really is hard for us to ask others to hold space for us. Very and, hard. Um, that has been something that I really had to put some energy into because I am very much like you. I love 
I love being the person people come to. It's partly yeah. why I work in this yeah. industry. Uh, it's partly why I've always been able to hold space for friends, but it's very scary for me to ask somebody to hold space for me and for me to say, this week was fucked up and I'm a mess and here's why, you know? Yeah. And in order to give myself permission to do that, I have reminded myself that my friends want to hold space for me because they actually, if you think about the way friendship works, it's like your friends really just want to get to know you better. And we don't, <laughs> we don't yeah. let them, we don't let them get to know us when we're always getting to know them, when we're right. always holding the space for them, when we're right. always getting to them. But it's like, it is such a, an, it's such an act of service and an act of trust to our friends and an act of reciprocity when we say to them like, oh my God, I need to tell you about this. I just need you to listen to it and I need you to cheerlead me and hear it, hear it all this because it gives them the opportunity to get to know us and then it gives them the opportunity to show up for us. And um, I really rarely let people show up for me because I'd much rather just, <laughs> I'd much rather just like hit the tennis ball over the net, run around to the other side, hit it back, run around to the other side. Hit, like I would rather yeah. do all the showing up than allow somebody to show up for me. So when you do some of this inventory stuff, we learn those patterns too. That like we're very, when we're very guarded and we're very used to like running the show that sometimes that manifests in this way where we just end up taking care of everyone and we don't really have anyone, we don't ask anyone to, to return the favor and to take care of right. us. Right. I, I mean, you're just preaching to the fire here because I'm that person. And then what happens is that I'll, when I do try to be vulnerable mm -hmm. at some level mm -hmm. and it doesn't go the way that I yeah. pictured it yeah. because now I ha have it all built up and I'm going to be grand, of course, or dramatic <laughs> about, you know, sharing my vulnerabilities yeah. and then it's not received right because people now aren't expecting that from me. It's like, oh, yes. you're the strong one. You're the strong one. Like... <laughs> Like, I don't know. I don't know how to do, I don't know how to, what, like the world's going to end if, if the strong one can't keep it together, you know? <laughs> and so then they don't know how to respond a lot of times yes. to that because now, and I'm a Leo, I'm very, <laughs> a lot. So it's like, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're just a lot of energy. So then when we come with that, just like we come with all this strength, Mm -hmm. when we're down we come with all that darkness like oh my god like i don't have like a nice little like medium like hey guess what this week i agree you i want to listen to it it's like <laughs> i've died it's over it's too much you know i'm crying oh my you know, god so i feel attacked i feel seen because here's the yeah. thing we we have to we practice there are two things that are coming to mind practice. one is that we teach people how to treat us to some extent and so yes. when we never ask people to show up for us, they don't expect to have to show up for us. No, so and they're like, not oh, ready. They're yeah, not ready. and they're like, uh, especially not, because I'm the same way. I don't want to tell you anything. And then like, I want to be able to call you sobbing and have you be like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> right? So, yeah. um, so the first thing is we do teach people how to treat us. So we have a little bit of responsibility there. But then the yeah. second thing is then we get to practice. And so what I've started to do is moving into the space of like, hey, I really need to talk. Can you call me? Or, hey, something really bad. Now, this is tough because I am not a good bearer of bad news. I actually I had to deliver bad news to my brother this week. And he was like, I feel like I always almost give somebody a heart attack. Because I'm always like, we need, I, because I so rarely say, we need to talk. Right. I have something to tell you. People are like, oh, my God. You know? Yeah. Um, it's like it's like if I call somebody, they're like, oh, oh my God, why is she calling me? Like, it's, yeah. it's like, hello? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have to practice doing more communication like that so that right. when I call, it doesn't always seem like it's the end of the world. Right. Um, and, and so yeah. I have started to tell people like, oh my God, I actually really need to talk about something. Can we talk? And I've like been like setting appointments almost. Can we talk at one yeah. tomorrow? Can we talk at whatever? Because yeah. I feel like that a lot, that gives my friends better space to show up for me, better space, better yeah. opportunity to hold space for me than if I just randomly call them. Because that's the other thing. I always randomly call somebody and they're like on the way to the grocery store. And I'm like, oh my God. They're not in the right but like, space. Yeah. yeah, but like my life is falling apart right now. So I need you to like pull over and like, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but that's the thing, right? It's like, even just having this conversation, we didn't even do the inventory work. We just had a conversation about it. And we like are learning new things about ourselves yeah. and like yeah. where we can change things, right? So I think one of the, one of the things that's challenging about this, this, exercise this inventory is like doing all this writing is hard work it's painful to look at then the next thing you got to do is go okay so if i'm if my some of the ways that i have responsibility for this or if some of the places where i'm writing the my part column are like dishonesty childishness yeah. entitlement yeah. those are my top three i have to tell you yeah. 
I, I wrote childish a hundred million times. I'm like, oh my God, I'm a 37 year old grown up woman writing that I'm, you know, or a 35, I can never remember exactly how old I was, 34. 34 yeah. year old grown ass woman writing down that I'm childish because I have these entitled expectations of how people should like read my mind and show up for me like childish, 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 childish. So I always have to check my behavior for childishness to be totally honest, like yeah. for, petty, for pettiness, for childishness, because um, that's, that's just part of who I am. So yeah, well, <laughs> so I mean, it it's, it's great that you admit it. It's one thing to admit it. And just real quick, <laughs> hi to people who are joining. Yay, Sid. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's, that's half the battle. I think that's half the battle in any kind of challenge uh, that you're facing with yourself is to mm -hmm. admit to admit it. Yeah, you know, to like put pride aside and say, "Yo, I'm childish. <laughs> this is where I go." Like for me, the only thing I keep thinking about, Heidi, as you're talking with relationships, even mm -hmm. when I was younger, mm -hmm. and then oh my god, my days in LA. Like I was just thinking about that the other day. Like one, how did I survive that? Yeah. Two, I'm glad there weren't cell phones like iPhones. I I know to document know. it. Mm -hmm. And three, like thinking about the way that I was was so much the way that I was in high school, where I was like, I wanted to be the best friend. Uh -huh. I wanted to be the cool one, mm -hmm. you know, and I wanted to be safe. I wanted to be everybody's friend. Mm -hmm. You know, that was my thing. And I wanted to be helping everybody with yeah. all of their stuff. What do you think I still do today? I mean, yes, I've moved it into a business mindset. Yeah. Yeah. But there's still I've, I've been setting boundaries, especially this week, again, mm -hmm. with people that are calling out to me and not understanding that right. it's my livelihood or yep. that you know you're not that close a friend to for me to give you all this advice like yep. all this stuff just creating some boundaries because I'm like wait a second I do this a lot yeah I, I mean they're coming to me because clearly I gave them that freedom or information yes, or advice accessibility right somewhere before mm -hmm. so it's not coming out of nowhere it's not mm -hmm. just their fault or their mm -hmm. fault or assumption right, right I put something out there that said it was okay for them to reach out to me like this. And so my solution this week anyway, yeah. has been setting boundaries in the most respectful way possible. Yes. But to tell the truth, to say, I adore you, I adore what you do, but unfortunately, you know, you're not within my close circle of people mm -hmm. that I would totally just give free advice yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, this is who I am, this is my livelihood, mm -hmm. this is what I do for a living. Good it might work. be fun, it is fun. But yeah. it's still, I, I need to get paid like, yes. or I need compensation yes. for um, why you're reaching out to me and just trying to be clear about it and yeah. not be hurtful. And that kind of goes into last week, right? With the boundaries. Yes. I know. I, totally I was just thinking this week. Good job. And that really speaks like that's amazing work. It's uncomfortable to do that. If, you know, yeah. after 40 years of people pleasing and showing up and holding space, you know, for, I'm speaking for myself and holding space for people, all that stuff, yeah. it is very hard to go, okay, wait a minute. This drains me. I get resentful about this. I don't yes. feel, you know, it's like I feel out of alignment. The energetic exchange isn't here. Okay, so now I need to set some boundaries around it. And that's actually the part of the reason we talk about boundaries first before we even do this work is so we can get comfortable thinking about them, practicing them, considering them. Because a lot of times what happens is once you do the inventory, you see these behaviors and you're like, oh, now I have to try to do like, I'm going to start to try to practice the opposite of these. Okay. So if one of the things of mine was dishonesty, now I have to start to practice honesty. Does it mean I'm going to get it right 100% of the time? No, I'm just going to practice it. I'm going to give myself yeah. some compassion and realize I've been being dishonest in this stuff for a long time. I'm just going to do the very best that I can. Or like, if one of my things is childishness, which I kind of assume, I kind of think childishness also includes like being super sensitive. Everything sure. hurts my feelings, right? Sure. So it's like, okay, Everything I'm going to try to be a little yeah. less sensitive. I'm going to try to be a little less childish about this. Or like yeah. if something where it's like, I am kind of being a martyr where I'm bending over backwards. And I actually, I had that one. That one's one that I do. And I actually couple it with grandiosity. Awesome. So a lot of times I will like bend over backwards and do something really grandiose for somebody that like I barely fucking know. <laughs> So they, <laughs> I mean, I wrote about this in the book. I dated this guy once and I had been dating him. It was post-divorce. I was, so I was like newly ish single. I was yeah. not sober yet. I had dated him for like 10 days or something. And then my girlfriends and I went to Las Vegas. And the only thing I really knew about him was that he worked at a bar in town and that yeah. he like wanted to have a bar in his own house. So like alcoholic me, I'm like, this is awesome. You're this amazing. Yeah. yeah. So we go, my girlfriends, and I go to Las Vegas and um, I didn't like win any money there, but I was shopping like as if I had won money there. And so I went into Tiffany and I found a champagne stir 
for this guy's bar that like I thought would be yeah. perfect for his bar stuff. So I bought him this like probably two hundred and fifty or three hundred dollars champagne stir. It was like <laughs> from Tiffany. Yeah, Tiffany. And I come back Woo! from Las Vegas and on like third date, I give him this Tiffany box and he was like he was like, Oh my God, this is really nice, whatever. And like of course the whole thing fell apart after that, right? Sure. Because it was like such sure. a weird and grandiose and bizarre thing to do. But I just like in the moment it felt so fun and so like whatever. Yes. But it was like when I really looked at that in my inventory, I'm like, wow, that was grandiose. It was manipulative. Of course, I was trying to like mm -hmm. get him to like me. It was like very much in that like manic pixie dream girl, like idea that I yeah, wanted him to think about me. Yeah, it's kind of a, a movie state of mind. It's like, yes. well, in the movies, the girl gives the thing and then she's like <laughs> loved forever. And then she yeah. gets a house I mean, in return or something. It's wild, but... <laughs> right? So it's like, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, oh, so when I looked at, sorry, I like completely lost my train of thought because <laughs> no, I was just, like but, in yeah, that story. Right. But um, the point being that when I looked at my inventory around my grandiosity or my martyrdom, I realized like I need to set some different boundaries so that I have relationships with people that I don't resent. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, yeah, come on. No, because I, girl, I do the same thing. And I always kind of chalk it up to that's my... That's my love language. Yeah. Gifts. Gift. Gifts. I'm a Me gift too. giver. You I can love ask gifting. anybody, yeah. right? Yes. So we're uh, we're cut from the same cloth that way. So for me, I would to I I totally like we'll see something for somebody and I can't. I'm like it's perfect for them. I have to get it. I have to send it to. I have to. <laughs> you know, it's like it's like, but it's almost ego driven a little bit too because it's like I found the perfect gift. I want to give it to them. I, I yes, I, yes, yes, yes. Me too. But then there's also, I love the satisfaction of knowing they're getting something to, you know, that brings joy or improves mm -hmm. their life or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if their reaction isn't the way I think it should go, <laughs> once again, I'm just like, well, I'm not going to give them a gift anymore. <laughs> and then it was like, Robin, they didn't ask for a gift in the first place. So yes. where, where's the resentment coming from? You know, I mean, it is like, I have that, tra like, not track record, but I constantly, Heidi, have to talk myself out of I know. being generous or stepping yeah. back or yeah. like even with Christmas this year. Yeah. I was like, I I cannot go overboard yeah. because there's been a track record, you know, of people just not accepting oh what I'm putting out there. And I searched and I, you know, went down, to, I went to that perfect store mm -hmm. and I was really thoughtful, thinking of them the whole time. And then when it's not received correctly, I'm mm -hmm. pissed. Yes. Yeah. I'm not just annoyed. I'm like, like, like how the shakes, like, why aren't you? Yes. I don't understand. Yes. And um, that is, is landing, no. oh my God, that is landing with me a hundred percent. I completely <laughs> relate to this so much or like, I'll go and pick like a super thoughtful gift for my brother. And then he sends yeah. me like a, a hammock, a camping hammock. Yeah, and like, really, I'm like, I don't even, I don't even go. I'm not even an outdoor cat. He and I have a, <laughs> we've had a conversation about that. So, uh, but the point, you're exactly right, because the point is, can I find some balance here where it's like, can I practice yeah. being generous and um, and gifting in a way that's not grandiose, that doesn't break the bank, that's like thoughtful? Yes. And can I do that? For me, now I have to ask myself, if I gift somebody this thing, am I going to be pissed if they're not like on their Instagram going, oh my God, I I know, know, Heidi. <laughs> like, Yeah, Heidi's amazed. <laughs> the answer is, it's fine. I don't care how they receive this gift, then I yes. send it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that is just a way that I check my motives on this stuff. But I love that we're having this conversation about this because really it speaks to how do we build some new behaviors? How do we practice some new behaviors that are the opposite of these behaviors and these patterns that have been causing us so much trouble? Yeah. And I will tell you that in the moment, it feels uncomfortable. Like it does not feel good to practice yeah. new behaviors when your whole life you've been doing it the other way. Like yeah, it will very unlearning. much it will very much feel like this is the wrong, I'm doing the wrong thing, you know? Yeah. And that can also be why it's so useful to have somebody that knows your journey that you're on in your corner. So that when you, when you read this to somebody and they know that you're going to try something different around grandiosity and you call them, and you're like, Oh my God, I found this gift. I'm going <laughs> to, I know this is what I almost did last year. I'm going to yeah. give my mom and my brother a Peloton bike because I just love mine so much. Okay, first of all, that's like a $5,000. Yeah, I was like, like damn. $6, You're going to Tiffany's yeah. Peloton? <laughs> Look, Heidi, you can, I will receive your gifts just so you know. <laughs> that credit card is on fire, bro. She melted. Bing, bing, bing. She <laughs> No, your credit card company calls. They're like, um, Heidi, we think you're giving a little too much even to your family this year. <laughs> We're going to send you over to our department of like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The credit card's melted, you know, whatever. And I told somebody that and they were like, 
you cannot actually tell my husband that. And he was like, <laughs> you know, no. you are going to be disappointed. He's like, you can do that if you want, but you know, yeah. you are going to be disappointed. I'm like, oh, that's, you know, he's like, I know you are working on this grandiosity thing. Like, why don't we try giving them something a little more? He's like, plus, I will tell you, as somebody who has received really nice gifts from you, it can be a little awkward when you give somebody fu something that's like fucking amazing and they give yeah. you something that's like moderately amazing. Yeah, it's like <laughs> some tea towels. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You know, and he's like, so you may not even realize the position of discomfort that you're putting your friends and family in yeah. because of your grandiosity. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, so just like having that person that knows what you're working on, that you can like run these ideas by that yeah. feel uncomfortable. And cause it, I will tell you, it would feel uncomfortable for me to be like, oh, I'm giving my mom a set of tea towels this year. But yeah. my mom always gifts me tea towels actually, which is like so funny that you mentioned that. And it would be like perfectly normal for me to gift her some tea towels, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's like, when we have some people around us that we can talk this stuff through, we can start to go, okay, is this behavior or is this thing I'm doing driven by this old pattern? Or is right. it something that's kind of like the opposite of that? And part of the reason I feel uncomfortable is not that it's a bad idea. It's just right. that it's like something I've never done before. Yes. So, so on that journey, Heidi, you've gone through the chart. We've like mm -hmm. talked all about, you know, the patterns and we see them. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about how to kind of, switch it up, unlearn, change. Mm -hmm. But are there things like in the moment when you're catching yourself like in the moment mm -hmm. of that old pattern? Yeah. To maybe if you're talking mm -hmm. to somebody after the call or if you're like the gift giving, right? Where yeah. We, where, is there something where you can just like kind of stop for like a five second beat and be like, why? what, what are my intentions? Or ask yourself, a, yeah. is there a question you can ask yourself Yeah. that might trigger you to recognize the pattern and then switch it up like right in that moment is yeah. there anything like that, that we can do i think there are a couple things um especially i i will just speak my i've never asked anyone this but since oh. we're vibing on this i'm wondering when i get into that grandiosity of gift giving my heart rate goes up like <laughs> oh no does, does it's hurt? like a personal joy like yeah, yeah like, like, oh, oh. so one thing yeah. to notice is like how is my body responding right now what's oh. going on in my body am i like getting this rush, this adrenaline rush, because I'm doing like the greatest gift thing ever. <laughs> this is amazing. I'm gonna be, I'm amazing. Everyone's gonna be, feel better. Yes, yeah. and part of the reason I ask that is because the other thing that I do, that maybe you do, I don't know, is that once I start on that, then if I don't take a minute and go, oh, my heart rate's high, I'm getting a little like, I'm kind of like getting, like, I'm just getting crazy yeah. about this gift thing. Yeah. Because if I don't stop, then I can be like, okay, well, I already spent 200 here. I may as well spend this and this and this. Like, so yeah. if I can take a minute and breathe and just like pause and not do any additional gifting that day, that's like a good opportunity. Um, another thing would be to ask yourself that question, especially as it relates to gifting, like, am I going to be mad if this is not received in a particular way? Right. You know, like, can I send this gift with literally no expectations, even if I don't get a thank you note or a acknowledgement, like, can I yeah. send this? Is that yeah. fine? But by um, the way, side note, y'all, please just acknowledge that you received a gift oh, or a package. God, it doesn't please. have to be a whole thing. It can be a text that says, yo, I got your card. Thanks. Yes. But the fact I, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. Well, like that's just polite. That's it's manners. just, that's etiquette. That's manners. So I'm just throwing it out there. Please yeah. just say that you got it. Yeah. Yeah. That would be nice. I agree. It's okay. useful. Anyways, um, going forward. <laughs> if, we, if we shift the example to like trying to communicate differently. Um, yeah. So one of the things that people pleasers do a lot is they'll agree to, we talked about this last week, I think yeah. actually, but they'll agree to something without really thinking about it. And right. if you've done that and you're like, oh shit, I'm trying to do something different. Fuck. You've got a couple of options. You can either just like chalk it up to practice and go, well, I'm just gonna keep this commitment because I'm trying to practice and like this one got yeah. away from me. Or you can call the person back and say, you know what? I'm really trying to practice something different this season. And I said, yeah. yes. And I, like I didn't that. mean to. So I actually have to, you know, I have to cancel and, um, and I'm sorry, like you know, yeah. right. So there is, I actually really love the opportunity of owning the practice of new behaviors and new communication styles. I think it um, actually gives us, uh, I think it allows us to be really vulnerable and actually allows yeah. us to build some intimacy with the person we're talking to, because yeah. I'd much rather build that intimacy of like, wow, I didn't mean to say that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I'm practicing something new and the old way of my old light, you know, the old me just says the stuff and like whatever, and I'm trying something different. That's a much more intimate conversation than either not having one at all or lying about it and being like, yeah. uh, you know, uh, whatever. Right. So yeah. there is some practice in showing up vulnerably and intimately by just saying, by owning, I'm practicing something new and this one got away from me. Yeah. 
I like that. I mean, that's just, and it's the honesty thing again. It's yeah. just, just be honest with people. People can get over it mm -hmm. if they don't like your answer, if it's honest. Yeah. It's, no, I, it's interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, look, I, I've gotten over a lot of things. It's like, well, you know what? It's not what I wanted to hear, but they told me the truth. So what can I do? I can't be mad at it. Yeah. You no, know? exactly. I mean, and I think a lot of people understand that as opposed to lying and then they find mm -hmm. out later that they caught you in a lie. And yeah. So now it's the whole thing and there right. doesn't need to be. And I think there is, um, there's something about the emotional maturity and it's a process to become emotionally yeah. mature enough to say like, wow, I'm trying something different. This one got away from me. I didn't mean to say yes. I actually need to say no or, you know, yeah. whatever it is. So it's like, there is, um, the vulnerability of that I think is really beautiful to bring to the table. Yeah. And uh, I agree with you that when we are honest with ourselves and with others, like there's not much else to, it's like, it's out there. People yeah. can take it or leave it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, okay. So taking that back more into like a partner relationship, mm -hmm. you know, that we were talking about with patterns, because mm -hmm. we kind of went off and talked about more like as a friend or a family member, yeah. how our patterns are and how we can kind of uh, yeah. recalibrate how do you see that more in an intimate relationship, like using that dialogue or yeah. what kind of dialogue would you use to, that you're noticing in this relationship? You don't want to screw it up, but you're doing old things. Yeah. Because, yo, my husband and I went through that at the very beginning of our relationship. Mm -hmm. I was in my 20s living in mm -hmm. LA, so there's that. But he's also over here dating, you know, a lot of women that mm -hmm. just weren't good for him. Mm -hmm. So he was coming with that and I was coming with this. And yeah. I'd never fought with somebody ever in my uh -huh. life. Like I fought uh -huh. with him at the beginning thinking, yeah. I'm, I'm not gonna, like, I was like, this, this is over. Like, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't <laughs> do this. Yeah, yeah. But then I literally stepped back and had a, I called somebody I trusted, which was my mm -hmm. mom. Mm -hmm. And we talked it out and it was like, no, I want this person in my life, mm -hmm. first of all. Mm -hmm. So what can I do different yeah. to keep this relationship and now make it healthy? Yeah. Well, and I think that's so, like such a great first step because there is like this clarity of like, it's kind of the same thing. Like, what's my part? What do I yeah. need to do different? Okay. And then I think once we have that clarity on that, there is, especially if we're already in relationship with someone, communicating that is really important. Hey, right. I thought about our last fight and I really looked at my part and I have to tell you, I have been mm. really jealous. I'm going to do what I can to let you know when I feel threatened yeah. and also to just feel like, and also to just like, know, and I'm also just going to remind myself that we're secure in this relationship, but I yeah. want you to know that when I'm feeling threatened, I really need from you some extra PSA or some, yeah. ex or some extra, what is that public PDA, not PSA. PDA. <laughs> <laughs> I really yes. need a little something extra to reassure me. So yes. there is something to, when you're in the relationship, identifying what's going on, figuring out what's your part and then surfacing to say, Hey, in that last fight we had, yes. I did not fight fair. I brought up a lot of stuff from the past and I am working to not do that anymore. I'm sorry yeah. that I did that. And you know, really what it came down to is just this deep fear that I have that we're not going to work out. Right? Yeah, totally. So again, yeah. like, and then even talking about where that pattern came from, I think, mm -hmm. right. Would that yes. be okay to like yeah. say, Hey, I dated a lot of dudes yes. in the past that treated me like this. So mm -hmm. I reacted like this. Mm -hmm. I'm doing that with you. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm trying yeah. to unlearn that, but that's yeah. my pattern and yes. like work with me on it because yes. this is where it came from. And right. I think a lot of times when people know mm -hmm. where you're coming from, literally, mm -hmm. it's so much more understanding, don't you think? And then they can maybe help you with that pattern. I agree. I hope. I think there is something, especially if you're already, like if you're in a committed relationship and you're feeling safe and um, secure with that person most of the time, then I do think it makes sense to say like, hey, I have this old, right? That's, uh, that's a yeah. level up on intimacy, right? You get to let them know more about you. Um, so I think that's really important. Uh, the other thing I want to say just before we wrap up is that, yeah. Um, because I'm like looking at the time, like, oh my god, how did an hour go so I know, fast? Just, that's the key of it all. I'm dying. Um, the other thing I will say is that when you've done the inventory and you're like looking at all this stuff, the next, yeah. actually the next step, and we can, sorry, there was a dust, a cosmic dust. The <laughs> next step, and we can talk about it next week or whatever, yeah. um, is that you make an ideals list based on these patterns. So it's like, now the next thing you're going to do is go, okay, these are my ideals. These are the things that, you know, given it's an exercise and unlimited thinking, ideals. these are the ideals that I want in my next partner. I want him to be available. I want him or them to be financially yeah. secure. I want them to be emotionally open. Okay, so now you get your list of ideals and then you start to go, am I embodying these ideals? Am I financially mm. secure? Am I emotionally open? Am right. I available for dating, right? And we can definitely talk more about that, but you use this ideals list then because you're like, okay, if my pattern is I date unavailable men, 
my ideals for a relationship is that this man is available. And then when I go out with a guy who's like, oh, you know, I'm seeing a bunch of women and I actually have like a primary girlfriend, you're like, oh, yeah. you're not available. I just look at my little list. I cr you don't match yeah. up. You're out. You can kind of use this list to like weed out the separate the wheat from the chaff as it were. So yeah. Um, yeah. And it, and it's a healthy list. It's not like an old school checklist that we <laughs> it's not like in a film or two where it's like, he needs to like, you know, how like, wear black socks and never order olives and he needs yeah. to have his part on part his hair on the left yeah not that list no it's like a grown-up list grown up list. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, i love that Eddie, that's like fantastic information i really enjoyed this chat oh extra God. today i i think i just needed it for this <laughs> friday going into the holiday um holiday week but i think what we're planning on maybe doing something on christmas eve is that what yeah, we're talking on the about 24th, you thursday, want to do thursday the thursday 24th, yeah 10 a.m yeah so y'all yeah. when you're all just hanging out now at home for christmas or laying low you can mm -hmm. tune in to us and begin yes. watching all our other little Check segments our... that we've had before i mean we're entertaining i'm loving this series i'm, I'm having too. so much just fun just so you know i'm coming on christmas eve uh, Christmas out. Oh, so oh, expect I'm a sweater, just... expect a hat, <laughs> and so expect some sparkle. <laughs> I'm glad you told me. I'll do the same. I'll do what I can. Good. Good. <laughs> do what you can. It'll be an, no. it'll be awesome. And then no, no. I need to get to cookie making. So <laughs> maybe you can have. Oh my some god! On the I top. just made these ginger molasses cookies that oh. were so good. My girlfriend Carly, who's on here, who's on Instagram, yeah. she's all of an artisan on Instagram. Um, she had this recipe. It was, I'm sending it to you. They were, please do. they're the best cookies I've made this season. Yeah, please do. I've never made a ginger, like, you're going to need some spices. All, so. The only you need, you do need clove, ginger, cinnamon, and cardamom, which I did not I like have the that. cardamom, but my, my parents will have it. Yeah. I made it without that, but the cardamom gives them a chai because they're actually chai ginger molasses, but I made them without the cardamom. Anyway, sending it to you. You got it. <laughs> all right, girl. Love you. <laughs> this was great. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone who's tuning in and leave comments below or if there's any questions you want us to cover or ask on yes. Christmas Eve, put them in the comments so we can answer them. Love it. Love it. Love All you. Right, bye. Bye, bye y'all.